Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 19 of SQL Server. In this session, we will learn creating and executing stored procedures with output parameters and learn about some of the useful system stored procedures. Now, before continuing with this session, I strongly recommend to watch part 18 of this video series. In part 18 of this video series, we have seen how to create stored procedures with input parameters. In this session, we will see how to create a stored procedure with output parameter. To create a stored procedure with output parameter, we use the keywords out or output. If you look at the stored procedure that we have here, SP get employee count by gender. Okay, this procedure has got two parameters at gender and at employee count. And if you look at the differences between these two parameters, at employee count has got output keyword whereas at gender doesn't have it. So this output keyword indicates that this at employee count is an output parameter and at gender you know is an input parameter by default because it doesn't have the output keyword. Okay and if you look at the procedure definition itself you know all we are doing is we are you know we are passing in the gender for example if you pass in male you know as the gender what this query is going to do is it's going to count you know from employee table how many males are there and then whatever count you you're getting you're using that count to initialize this output parameter okay now let's see how to actually you know create the stored procedure so if you look at this we have this employee table and we have got some males and females now we are about to create a stored procedure which gives us the employee count by gender and obviously to create a stored procedure we use create procedure command so create procedure and then give the stored procedure a meaningful name sp get employee count you know by gender okay we want to get the employee count by gender and this procedure obviously if you want the total count of employees by gender at the minimum you have to pass the gender information like do you want the male employee count or female em employee count so add gender and this is going to be of type envir care let's say 20 is the size and then we are going to have another parameter called employee count okay and this is going to be of type integer and I want this to be of type output parameter as begin and so what do we want to do now we want to select the total number of employees you know for the past in gender and to do that we will say select now if you look at this select count of star for example from TBL employee this will give us the total number of employees in the table but we don't want total number of employees we want the total number of you know male or female employees depending on what gets passed into the stored procedure so where gender is equal to now if you if I say gender is equal to male then it will give us the total number of male employees which is seven but we don't want to be hard coding the gender like this instead we want to be using the parameter which the user is going to pass when he invokes the stored procedure okay now when we execute this look at this we get that count and we are selecting it directly and and you know we get the result set but we don't want to do that instead we want to initialize this output parameter so that's why we will say select at employee count is equal to so what's going to happen whatever we get I mean whatever this count function returns instead of select it as a result set we are passing it to the output variable so the output variable gets uh, I mean output parameter gets initialized okay and instead of st saying star it's always good to use the column name there so let's use ID so that's it so let's create the stored procedure so we have successfully created a stored procedure with an output parameter all right now to execute the stored procedure with output parameter now we have created the stored procedure we want to execute that 
Okay. Now, usually we have seen how to execute a stored procedure with input parameters in the previous session. Okay. To execute a stored procedure with output parameter, it's slightly different. Okay. Now, you know that this stored procedure is, ex is accepting two parameters. One is the gender parameter and the other one is the employee count. Gender is an input parameter, employee count is an output parameter. Okay. Now, obviously input parameter means you have to pass something to the stored procedure whereas output parameter will return something back to you okay now when a stored procedure returns something back to you you want to hold it somewhere obviously in a variable that's why you first create a variable to receive the value okay so i'm creating a variable called at employee total and notice the data type of this variable should match the data type of your output parameter why because essentially we get a value of this data type back so we want a variable you know basically to hold the value that is going to come out of the stored procedure so that's why we are creating a variable of integer data type okay and then when we actually execute the stored procedure look at this we are executing the stored procedure here we pass the value for gender which is nothing but the male and then what is this query going to do it's going to count the number of males and then it's going to initialize you know this output parameter okay so we are passing in a variable which is going to receive that count in this case at employee total receives the value and then finally we print that value so let's see how to execute this okay so obviously to execute the stored procedure okay first we need to declare a variable let's say at total count maybe of type integer so the data type of this variable should match the data type of the parameter the output parameter okay and then what you're doing is you're executing the stored procedure which stored procedure is that sp employee get count by gender and then when you execute look at this when you execute that stored procedure obviously you have to pass in for you know which gender do you want to count the number of employees male or female you have to pass that input value for that input parameter but whereas for the output parameter you don't have to pass a value you will get a value back so here we want to check the count of male employees and then we pass this variable to receive the value back okay now when you pass that you need to specify the output keyword otherwise it will be null okay so that's why to indicate to the stored procedure okay this at total count is an output parameter you have to specify here that you can either say out or output it doesn't really matter okay and then finally what you can do is print the value or you can pass it to another stored procedure or do anything you want okay so when we execute this we should get that value back which is 7 here okay now look at this if I don't pass the output keyword there and if I try to execute that look at this it doesn't print anything because this is null okay it doesn't receive the value if you don't specify the output keyword and you know when you declare it if you if you haven't initialized the set total count to anything it will basically be null and you will end up printing null. and to quickly check that you can check that here if you know maybe at total count is null maybe we want to say print at total count is null all we are doing is we are checking if it is null or not else if it is not null we want to print a message saying that it is not null print at total count is not null now if we execute that look at this we didn't specify the out keyword if we don't specify the out keyword this variable will not receive the value and since we haven't initialized this variable anywhere else it is going to stay null and if it is null it will print this line so let's execute this 
So when we execute these lines, look at this, at total count is null. But on the other hand, if you pass in something, you know, if you pass the out keyword, what's going to happen, this variable is going to be initialized with the count of employees of that gender. Okay, so now when I execute this, you should get the message saying that at total count is not now, which means it has got some value. All right, so keep that in mind whenever you execute a stored procedure with output parameter, you know, for that output parameter, you have to specify the out keyword. Otherwise, it will not be initialized and it will always stay now. All right. Okay, so if you don't specify the output keyword when executing the stored procedure, the the at employee total variable will be null. And we have just seen that. Okay, now here, you know, we are passing, look at this. We are, we are, if you look at the stored procedure, the first parameter is gender parameter and the second parameter is the employee count. So we are passing in in that order. Okay, so the first value will be used by this parameter. The second one will be used by this parameter. Okay, now if you use the parameter names when you're passing values to the stored procedure, then the order doesn't really matter. For example, look at this. Let's say I want to pass my output parameter first. How do I do that? You have to use the parameter names. Okay, let's get rid of this here. Okay, so what's the parameter name? It's at employee count. So that at employee count is equal to this output parameter and you still should have the out keyword. And then you can say at gender is equal to I want to pass male. Okay, now look at this. I altered the order in which we are passing the parameter but parameters but since I specify the names of the parameter the stored procedure knows which value is for which parameter okay so obviously if I execute this now it should work without any issue so we get seven okay seven male employees all right there are some extremely useful system stored procedures which we can use for a variety of purposes for example here I have this sp underscore help procedure it's a system stored procedure and in the last session we have learned that you know any procedure that starts with sp underscore is usually a system stored procedure and user defined stored procedure shouldn't be having that name okay so if you see this sp underscore help system stored procedure this procedure can be used to view the information about the stored procedure like parameter names the data types etc okay let's see this in action now, if I want to find out more information about, you know, the stored procedure that we have just created, I can use sp underscore help, take the stored procedure, paste there, and when we press, you know, select those two, and when I press execute, you should see, okay, name of the stored procedure, and look at this, the type is stored procedure, this is a stored procedure, and when we have created it, the parameters it has got, their data types, etc. Okay, so you can use sp underscore help or if you don't want to use that system stored procedure, you can, you know, go to programmability stored procedures folder, refresh and you should see your stored procedure there and if you expand that, you should see the parameters that it is expecting. All right. Okay, now this sp underscore help you know, you can use that with any database object, for example, tables, views, triggers, etc. For example, look at this. When I use this sp underscore help with this TBL employee, what information do I get? I get all the information about, you know, the different columns that are present in this table, their data types, etc. Any indexes this table's this table has got any constraints this table has got basically you get the information about the object okay it could be table view stored procedure trigger etc so sp underscore help work with any database object and if you don't want to use the system stored procedure you can graphically look at the information about any database object again or what you can do is simply highlight that object and press alt f1 that's a keyboard shortcut and you you get the exact same information again okay
So that's about SP underscore help system store procedure. And in part 18 of this video series, we have seen how, you know, what is the purpose of SP underscore help text. If you want to view the definition of a stored procedure, we use SP underscore help text system stored procedure. Okay. Similarly, even if it is a stored procedure with output parameters, you can still use SP underscore help text system stored procedure. Okay, press F5, you should see the text of the system stored procedure. And remember in part 18, we have seen how to encrypt a stored procedure. If you have encrypted a system, I mean a stored procedure, you cannot view the text of that stored procedure. Okay, and finally, this SP underscore depends, which is really useful. Okay, this stored procedure basically is is used to view the dependencies of the stored procedure. For example, if a stored procedure depends on a table, you know, look at this. This stored procedure depends. So this stored procedure, where are we getting the information from? This stored procedure is getting the information from TBL employee table. So this stored procedure depends on this table. Okay. So when I execute this, so we get that information, okay? This stored procedure is depending on these columns, ID and gender, present in these in this table, TBL employee, okay? Now, how is this useful? This is useful because let's say I want to drop TBL employee table, okay? If I drop, when I say drop, I'm, I'm going to delete that table. So if I delete TBL employee table, and if I try to execute the stored procedure, what happens? It will throw an error because this stored procedure is using the table and if the table is not present obviously we get an error okay so i can quickly check okay are there any any dependencies and if there are dependencies i wouldn't delete this table okay so what happens if i delete it instead of deleting it let's rename it to something so tbl employee 11 i have just renamed it to that it's as good as deleting it and now if we execute the stored procedure look at what's going to happen it will throw an error saying invalid object name TBL employee. Okay, so you can quickly check, okay, what are the dependencies? Okay, so since you want to delete this table, you can check th that table itself. So you can use that TBL employee table here. And when you press F5, look at this. There is a stored procedure that is referring this TBL employee table. Okay, so if you look at the messages here in the current database, the specified object, which is nothing but, you know, TBL employee, the specified object is referenced by the following, which is nothing but the system stored procedure. So it's saying us this stored system, st I mean, this stored procedure is dependent on this TBL employee table. So deleting this table may affect the stored procedure. Okay, so we'll be cautious when we are about to do that. So SP underscore depends, view the dependencies of the stored procedure. This system stored procedure is very useful, especially if you want to check if there are any stored, procedure that, stored procedures that are referencing a table that you are about to drop. SP underscore depends can also be used with other database objects like tables, etc. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.